Vinyango will face Troy Dorsey, who is hoping to become the first fighter in history to hold world championships in both kickboxing and boxing. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert, along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Vegas Hilton presents one of our featured bouts, 10 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner and wearing white trunks. Fighting out of LA by way of Caracas, Venezuela. His weight is 125 pounds and his record 23, four and three with 15 wins by way of knockout. Welcome the former two-time world champion, Bernardo Pinyango. Okay, Dorsey, you know, you were already given instructions. Troy Dorsey with the goal. slight height uh, advantage. Eight seconds will be responsible for any mistake. Dorsey, 126 and a half. Uh, Pinyango, 125 pounds. Yeah. Troy Dorsey at 10, 3, and 2, 8 by knockout to Jorge Paez. While Bernardo Pinyango, the 30 year old from Caracas, Venezuela, at 23 and 4, 3 draws, 15 by knockout. His most recent fight. Back in December in Puerto Rico, he stopped Tommy Valoy in six rounds. Under Nevada rules, scoring on the 10-point must system, handled by three judges, three knockdown rule in effect, no standing eight, and the bell saves the fighter only in the final round. The question concerning Pinyango, is he still world class, Ferdy? He is the one-time WBA junior featherweight champion, the one-time WBA Bantamweight champion. He'll find out when this afternoon is over with because Troy Dorsey is going to give him continuous pressure as he's done from this opening belt. He's a very well conditioned fighter. His corner has him smothering the other fighter. That's their words. They smother the other fighter with pressure and with nonstop punching. Dorsey, a three time world kickboxing champion in the featherweight and bantamweight division. He burst into the rankings with upset wins in terms of boxing over Harold Rhodes, and he stopped previously unbeaten Anthony Boyle. That was back last February, and that earned him the shot at Paez. And you recall all the weight problems that Paez had when he went up against Dorsey. He was a drain fighter, and many folks, including you, felt that Dorsey won that fight. Yeah, I thought no question about it. He had won it, but that's the way it goes in boxing. He's back on the ladder. He's got to crawl back up with a very good showing here in order to hope to get a rematch with Pius. So this is an important fight for both men. Dorsey in the black trunks, Pinyango in the white. Dorsey likes to continue banging from close range. And he does have excellent stamina. However, there is a lack of power in his punches. I, I think that he, he can't turn over his punches enough, but he, this is his fight right here on the ropes. This is what he had Paez doing, backing him off to the ropes, and then his superior strength as he puts his head in there and punches is what gets him these rounds. They're not devastating punches. They're not really hard boxing punches. What they are is they wear you out. Well, Dorsey's manager, Dave Gorman, has told us on a number of occasions that uh, technically Troy Dorsey is not the best fighter in the world. He said, I know it, he knows it, but he has what it takes to win. This is the start of our boxing letter from Las Vegas, and that is it. That Espinosa's fighting two people, the critics that uh, have fueled uh, Paez, Paez's extreme determination to make up for a bad showing last time. But in the meantime, in the second round, Troy Dorsey picks up right where he left off. Savage attack. Again, we have to watch the legs of Pinango. Remember, these fighters are veteran fighters and then all of a sudden the legs go and they're standing targets for young kids like Troy Dorsey who comes ahead. So Troy Dorsey sending Bernardo Pinango to the canvas here in the second round. 
So much for answers to that question. Now the next question is, what kind of finisher is Troy Dorsey? He's got two minutes to do the job. And Yango is known as a boxer who has a good chin. He has been knocked down only twice in his career, and he did get up to win both of those bouts. He's taking big punishment right now. He's about to quit. Padilla is looking at him very closely. Dorsey yelling with every punch. That gets the attention of the judges. You know when he's thrown a hard punch, he gives it a big holler. Much like the rebounder from uh, UNLV, Moses Carey on the screen. And Pinango, where's the referee? In major trouble, Padilla taking a close look. Just under one minute to go. At least second round. Clear shots. Clear right hand punches by Troy Dorsey. Now he doesn't have that kind of power, but he's certainly landing enough of them. The cumulative effect should put Pinango out of here. Pinango went down earlier in the second round, appeared as if he was on his way down again, now holding and hitting, and you saw Padilla uh, shove his hand away. Pinango has very little left in his punches. Nothing to hold Troy Dorsey up. There, bear in mind, there's no standing eight count in this fight. We'll be back in a moment. Killer knockdown. The right hand that's been landing all during that round knocked Pinango right on his back. He got up and he fought bravely. Had there been a standing eight count in effect, he would have taken it right here because he was he buckled into the ropes. That's when you give him a standing eight, but there is none, and the fight, the round continued. And this is round three. It is scheduled for 10. In the black trunks, Troy Dorsey, 27-year-old out of Dallas, Texas, and in the white, the 30-year-old from Caracas, Venezuela, Bernardo Pinango. Man who's had a standout career, winning the WBA Bantamweight title in a surprisingly easy decision over Gabby Canizales some four years ago. Made three defenses of that title, winning all three, including a championship victory over Frankie Duart. He uh, won the WBA Junior Featherweight crown two years back and then lost the title three months later to uh, Juan Jose Estrada. What we're seeing here is almost a limp dish rag of, of Pinango. He has no punch. His legs are not carrying him away from the bull-like rushes of Dorsey. Dorsey is getting a little right hand crazy. He's gotten a little rich with that right hand and he's throwing it without any preparation, just flinging it. He's got to go right back to, to business, right back to digging in, rushing in as he punches like that right there. He's got to move in behind a jab and then throw that right hand. They, that's what he can't do. Those wild looping right hands, uh, it, it's just amateur night. That, that's amateur night. You know, even if the punches don't land, at least the judges know he threw a hard punch yeah. by the yelling that he's doing. Not a bad technique. Yes, Troy Dorsey, very animated. You can hear what he unleashes, whether they do land or not. Oh, Pinango with a nice little volley. Nothing on his punches, but at least he's fighting back a little bit. to wander around the ring and not take those punches on the ropes, but that's toward, uh, Troy Dorsey's main uh, uh, strength, that he follows you around, he's got great legs, and he just pins you to the ropes and you can't get away from him. Look at the way he puts his head in there and punches. Yanga also low with uh, several of his punches. He often holds and, and hits and 
is frequently called for low blows, but as you say, not much uh, in terms of power on the punches being attempted by Bernardo Pinango. Final seconds of the third round. Well, Jorge Paez awakening from that pre-fight nap, getting ready to go up against Luis Espinosa in the rematch. That is the second part of our boxing doubleheader here on the premiere show of NBC Saturday Sports Showcase. It is round number four with Troy Dorsey in the black trunks going up against Louis Espinoza in the white. I should say going up against Bernardo Pinango in the white. Pinango put down in the uh, second round and then able to hang on. Well, he hasn't done what he needs to do, which is a lot of lateral motion, and he hadn't done that because he's got 30-year-old legs, and more importantly, he's got Troy Dorsey right in his sternum. He's right in his chest. All, all. If he's not got his head in there, he's got his glove in there. He is controlling the fight. He's controlling the action as Troy Dorsey. Penyango has got to come awake and recover enough because, in my opinion, he's blown the first three rounds. Scoring is on the 10-point must system handled by the uh, three judges from Nevada, Dave Moretti, Cindy Barton, Lou Tabbitt. I don't think Pinango's ever fought anybody like uh, Troy Dorsey. I don't think anybody's ever fought anybody like Troy Dorsey in professional fighting because of his mixed uh, background. He, he doesn't plant his feet right. He's throwing his punches from all angles. And one of the most important factors, Pinango is a junior featherweight. Dorsey is one of the strongest featherweights in the world. And I, that is coming to uh, bear on the outcome of this fight right now. Yes, the question going in concerning Pinango. Was, is he as strong at 126 as he was at 122 and 118 pounds? And the answer apparently is no. He's not. On the other hand, he didn't have to fight a bull like Troy Dorsey in those lower weights. One thing about Troy Dorsey that you like, he's so well trained that he focuses so relentlessly on his task at hand. You don't see him dilly-dallying around thinking of other things. His mind is three minutes of straight fighting. And Dorsey always in excellent condition. He's a stable mate of Steve Cruz. Dorsey's manager, Dave Gorman, credits uh, Troy for helping Cruz come up with one of the uh, big shockers of back in 86 when he had stopped the previously unbeaten WBA featherweight uh, Barry McGuigan. I don't know if he stopped him or the Las Vegas Heat stopped him. That was that some was a fight. Rough, yes, a rough, rough late afternoon. Right in the blazing sun. That is it for the fourth round. We'll be right back. Let's take another look at this uh, quick knockdown before we return to the action. See, it was right flush on the jaw. Pinango without the legs goes straight down, and we progress on to round five, and more of the same as Dorsey's pinned him already to the ropes. That knockdown taking place in the uh, second round. This is scheduled for 10 with Pinango in the white trunks and Dorsey in the black. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Good left hand by Dorsey. That uh, clip, Pinango. Pinango has a bad habit of hitting on a break. Almost taking any advantage he can. He doesn't look like he's in wonderful shape right now, Pinango. He's holding on as Pinango. Look at his has no legs. They're folding under it. Pinango's 30-year-old legs have quit in advance of the rest of his body. And it gone by in the fifth round. No more of Dorsey Sparse. Each day, three rounds with a 140-pound fighter and three more rounds with a 160-pound fighter. Imagine what it feels like to get in with a 100-pound fighter. Oh, look out. Dorsey went down as he attempted a lunging right hand. And Pinago just stepped away and, and then bows in the direction of uh, Dorsey. It landed in the air. That's a very amateurish right hand, and he just shouldn't throw it without preparation or setting his feet 
because of the kickboxing things, he doesn't set his feet like a boxer does, and therefore he's out of out, completely out of out of proportion. What's your feeling about the unorthodox uh, training procedures of Troy Dorsey? Well, when you're going to fight in this way and you're as strong as he is, I like that idea. I mean, I, I, unless he he's fighting with a world champion, but good, strong competition, much heavier than you are. Then when you get in with these lighter guys, it just feels like you're lifting feathers. It's like nothing. Well, swinging the, uh, the heavy bat in baseball, preparing for your uh, your actual on at bat. Incidentally, Dorsey, as a kickboxer, has a record of 29 and 1 with 16 knockouts. He also owns the fastest kickboxing knockout, a oh. nine-second KO. In a low blow. Very, very low blow. Uh, that, that was uh, a warning should have been given with that one. Dorsey with that strong right hand landing. But that was a perfect one. It was left, right. Now that's what should be landing. A left jab in there, and then that strong right hand. Benyango's resting on the ropes already, getting any kind of relief he can. That is it for round five. Watch the technical deficiency that uh, Dorsey has. He didn't set his, his uh, feet right, so he went right past him and fell down. Now, here's the low blow by Benyango. Now, that is what you call a classic low blow and should have drawn an official warning. Oh, beautiful right hand by Dorsey. This is round six. Dorsey with the hands down low, very confident. Benyango has nothing left to hit him with. I mean, even if he hits him flush, he's got nothing left in his punches. Very tentative, very wishy-washy. He's been taking a shell lacking through five straight rounds. Are we looking at a uh, shot fighter in Bernardo Pinango? I believe that is, the, he's on the cusp of being here. On the cusp. And I think he's going over the cusp with this fight. I mean, these kind of fights don't improve your chances of making a recovery. They just push you into further being shot. Bernardo Pinango, one time WBA junior featherweight title holder, one time bantamweight champion. At the age of 16, he won a berth on Venezuela's national amateur team, won a silver medal for his country in the 1980 Moscow Olympics, and turned pro in August of, of 81. Pinango is in slow motion. Following that last good combination uh, by Dorsey, he he held on and took uh, the efforts of Padilla to get him pried away so the fight could continue. He is hurting right now. He just doesn't have anything to keep this windmill off. <laughs> Referee Carlos Padilla, formerly of the uh, Philippines, now living in Las Vegas, and a referee, 23 world title fights, including the thriller in Manila. Good combination again by Dorsey as we come up on one minute left in round six. I can remember our worry. How would he handle Joe Frazier? How would he handle Muhammad Ali in that fight? He's so little, and he voiced the same kind of uh, worry and yet did a great job. This is the first part of a boxing doubleheader on the Saturday Sports Showcase. Coming up later on, Jorge Paez defending his IBF. Featherweight crown getting ready to go up against Louis Espinosa, the one-time WBA junior featherweight champion. And if there's one fight Baez would like to have back, it's the Dorsey fight where he was so washed out. He really wants to fight Dorsey back. That's, that's what he's thinking about. How can I get this guy back in here? Baez had no difficulty making the weight for today's bout. And he is back to his animated self. Uh, he was down in the hours uh, prior to the uh, Dorsey fight, not his usual self. Well, having lost all that weight, he was semi-conscious during that time. <laughs> to round seven from the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel, it has been Troy Dorsey having his way, Dorsey in the black, and Bernardo Pinango in the white trunks. And Dorsey's been doing something a little different. Instead of just powering him to the ropes, he's been keeping that what he calls power distance so he can punch from outside. And of course, that right hand has been gonging right off in Yango. Even when it's amateurish, it's really doing some damage. 
power distance that he refers to is about the arm, the length of the jab. He, he's, instead of having his head right in his chest, pounding away in close, he's outside. And of course, that is what's uh, causing the right hand to land with such force. Bertie, it looks like uh, Dorsey has a mouse under the right eye. Look a cut. He does. He, I, he must be butting heads because he's not getting hit that much. He's got a good cut man in Ron Hatcher, so I don't think that's going to be a factor. But here's Pinango succeeding with the combination and showing some spark. The first good spark that he's shown, still no zip in the punches. Nothing on the punches, but at least he's throwing them and backing Dorsey up. First time Dorsey's backed up. Pinango landing with the uppercut. It's the first time that Dorsey has had some competition in this fight, and he doesn't look like he likes it. His mouth is open, some, uh, I'm sorry you say, some spit drooled out, indicating he's a little tired as Dorsey, that little exchange, even though it wasn't hard punches by Pinango, is taking its effect. One of Dorsey's weaknesses has been lack of defense, and he has been caught here in the seventh round. And now cuts under both eyes of Troy Dorsey. Holding and hitting by Pinango. Oh, that uppercut to Pinango's landing is doing damage on Dorsey. If he just had some steam, he would have Dorsey in some kind of problem right now. That uppercut is causing Dorsey to blink and back up. We approach a half minute left in the seventh round. A big round for Bernardo Pinango. He's done it with combinations. He's done it with uppercuts. And he has turned things around after the good start by Dorsey. Well, Dorsey's got such a running head start that he, Pinango's going to have to keep this up for the rest of the fight. But he has made his interesting good right hand by Dorsey. That long amateurish light right landed. a solid action round and a good one for Bernardo Pinango. Dorsey getting hammered by Pinango here by a variety of punches. And down goes Pinango. As this eighth round got underway, Dorsey unloading and put Pinango down. That's the second time he's gone down. And Dorsey now looking to finish it. Big right hand. So Pinango goes down again. The three knockdown rule is in effect. He is in rocky shape. He's looking. He's looking, and he cannot go anymore. The fight is over. Carlos Padilla calls it. This after the difficult time that Troy Dorsey had in the seventh round, but he was able to come out and unload. On Bernardo Pinango. Here it is coming right out of the corner, opening seconds, and he, he caught Pinango with the right hand. That was the same right hand that had been landing all along. Second knockdown. You can see he's just in no condition to continue. His head hits that bottom rope, and it is just an impossibly 